Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you could take a set of images and create and process a panorama in On One Photo Raw 2019. It's super easy to create a panorama using On One Photo Raw 2019. For this demonstration, I have a set of three images. As you can see, I shot them vertically and I overlapped each image by about one third. Now they are raw files and I didn't process them at all. I'm going to create the panorama directly from these unprocessed raw files. One thing I need to tell you though, once you create the panorama, the actual panorama is going to be a PSD file. So you will lose some raw info in the conversion process. Usually that's not going to matter. But if you want to make, a, let's say, a profile change, you want to change the camera profile, you're going to have to do that to the raw file now. And you'd have to do it, of course, to all three raw files or how many raw files you happen to have in your panorama. You could use two files, 12 files, it doesn't matter. As many files as you have, you're going to have to do that profile change to all of those images. Furthermore, uh, sometimes white balance, although you'll, you'll be able to edit the white balance in the PSD file, sometimes white balance editing or changing of the white balance is more effective when done to the raw file. So I would recommend if you have to modify the white balance, do it to the raw files now. Then create your panorama. Now in my case, I'm happy with the default on one profile and I'm not going to do anything with white balance. So I have these unprocessed raw files. I click on one, I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one so all of them are selected. Now again, I'm using three images. Again, you could use two images or as many as you have. Just remember, the more images you use, the, hard, um, the longer it's going to take to create the panorama and the panorama itself is going to be larger and take up a lot of disk space. So I have these three have them all selected. We're going over here to the right where it says panel. We're going to click right there. And what it's going to do, it's going to create a preview of our panorama. And then we'll have some options to make some slight changes to the panoramic process that On One is using to create our panorama. And you'll see any moment now, the On One panorama preview box will open. All right, we have it open and you can see the previews right here. And to the right of that, we have some options. First of all, the type of panorama we're creating. You have actually three choices, auto, which by default it's going to choose, spherical or collage. Now it's been my finding that auto almost always works fine. Um, I've never had auto not to work. Now you could choose one of the other two to try it out, but it is going to do all of that um, aligning of the images and creating the panorama preview all over again. So it's going to take some time to do that. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it on auto, but you could try the other two and see what it looks like. Now, what do you want to do with the edges? I have it by default showing crop. If we go to none, you could see it's not cropping at all. And I handheld these three shots. So you could see there's a lot of dead pixels on the outside. So you could process it here and then crop it yourself later or have it automatically crop the image for you, or go to warp to fill. And you can see the difference between crop and warp to fill. Warp to fill gives you a little more a horizontal real estate, but a little less vertical real estate compared to the actual just crop option. I'm gonna stay with the crop option. Now file size, I mentioned when you're creating the panorama, it could get really very, very large. And post-processing a super large file uses a lot of computer resources. So if you find that your computer just isn't cutting it, you may want to go to file size and choose a smaller uh, resolution for your panorama. 50%, you know, obviously is half the size and hopefully your computer will handle it better. I'm gonna stay with 100%. Now, what module do you wanna open the panorama in once it actually creates the panorama? You browse developer effects. I'm going to open in the develop module and we'll process it from that point forward. And I'm going to add the panoramic metadata. You could choose not to if you want. And I'm going to click save. 
So now it's going to cre actually create the panorama. It's going to put it in the same folder that these three images are in, and it will open up in the develop module. Now I'm going to pause the video and we'll return once it actually creates the panorama. But real quick, I want to mention that if you're curious about the equipment I used, the settings, and the exposure info, all of that will be listed in the description below the video. So check that out. So we'll be back as soon as this creates our panorama. All right, on one created our panorama and it looks great. It's seamless and it looks like it's one solid image. One thing I do notice, it's a little bit crooked. Now that's not on one's fault, that's my fault. I did hand hold the shot and it isn't perfectly straight. So I'm going to straighten it right away. I'm gonna to go to the crop tool. And I'm just gonna go outside this left edge here until I get that circular arrow and I'm gonna click with the left mouse button and I'm just gonna drag it till it's straight. Like right about there and then I'm gonna to go to the top and click on apply. And that looks, uh, that looks all right. So we'll go to tone and color. And I mentioned when, um, when you're creating your panorama, it creates this PSD file. And with the PSD file, you won't be able to pick another profile. So that's baked in. So as I mentioned, you can't change the profile, but we could process it as we normally would. I'm gonna bring highlights down a little bit. I think I'll bring midtones down a little bit too. And I think shadows, maybe I'll bring those down a touch. And I'm going to get a white point. I'm going to hold the J key. J is in Jack. Key in. And I'm going to click on the whites. And I'm going to move that to the right. And you can see that red coming through. That means I'm starting to clip the highlights. When you're clipping the highlights, that means you're losing all detail. It's just absolute white. I don't want to lose absolute, I don't want to lose any detail in the highlights. I want that red completely gone. So I'm just going to back it off till every spot of red is gone I think right there so to me for me that's a perfect white point similarly for blacks I'm going to hold the J key in click on the black slider move that to left and you'll see blue coming through the blue means I'm clipping the shadows and for me the way I like to process images I like to clip the shadows a little bit that way I feel it gives my image more tonal depth I have absolute black in the image and then I have almost absolute white in the image and to me, that gives just my image a little more tonal depth, and I like that. So we'll leave that as is. And those of you that watch my videos know that I typically don't do anything with structure or haze. I prefer to use an effect for uh, those type of things, so I'm not going to do anything there. And actually, as I look at the image, it's done as far as the tone and color uh, tab in the develop module is concerned for me. Um, now, feel free. Everyone's different. Add contrast here if you like. Add structure. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. This is just the way I prefer to do it. And I'm not going to do anything with white balance here either. So I'm done with that. Now, I mentioned too that I don't like to sharpen and reduce noise in the develop module. I prefer to do that in the effects module because in the effects module, we have masks. And I could apply the sharpening directly where I want it and not apply it where I don't want it. And I, same thing with noise reduction. In this case here, the image uh, was shot at a very low ISO and there really is no noise in it. So I really don't have to worry about that. Lens corrections, it found the lens for the images and you could see that it's fine. So it did lens corrections and I don't need to do anything with transform. So I'm going to jump right over to the effects module. Now, you know, I kind of get monotonous because I almost, I always do the same thing all the time. So I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit just to try to show a different filter here or there. So I'm going to go to add filter and this time I'm going to add a photo filter, one that I don't often add. And you can see by default it put this very cool filter on there and we don't want that. Let's try 85. That's a warming filter. And it was actually, the sky was a little warmer than is being depicted in our file. Uh, so I do want it to be warmer. That's what it really was. But I don't think 85 is cutting it. So I'm going to go down to orange. Um, we'll go to orange. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a ridiculous amount and I'm going to turn saturation way up. Now I know this looks ridiculous. All right. Don't, don't fret because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a luminosity mask. Now to do that, I'm going to click on the mask icon right here and right here where it says lumen, just click right there. And what the luminosity mask does, it will mask away this filter on all the midtones and dark tones and only allow it on the highlights. And you can see there's before and there's after. So it warmed up the sky and the ice quite a bit. And that's really what it looked like when I was there. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it away from the grass in the foreground. That just doesn't look right. So I'm going to get a masking brush and I'm going to be in paint out mode. And I'm just going to do this real quick. I'm going to have opacity to 100. I'm going to turn feather up a little more, maybe to 50-ish. All right. And then we're just going to quickly mask it away from the grass. So it's not, this filter is not affecting the grass at all. I think that looks a little more realistic. And I want it away from this grass in the uh, background too. So I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. The right bracket key will give you a larger brush. And we're going to come on here and just go. I'm going to avoid the snow as much as I can. I'm just going to go very quickly though. So, of course, if I wasn't doing the video, I would, uh, I would be much more careful. I want it off there. So I think that looks decent. There's before the photo filter and there's after the photo filter. So that's okay. I probably would fiddle with this a little more, but I think that's all right for now. Next, I think I'm going to see if a sunshine filter pushes it over the top. Let's, let's see what that looks like. All right. There's um, natural, strong, glow. I usually don't like glow. Um, radiance, sun glow, sunshine, warm highlight. Let's go with radiance. No, maybe not. Let's go with the strong. You know, let's just create our own. Well, um, I'm going to go to a mount. I'm going to turn it up and turn warmth up, turn saturation up. Let's see what glow does. Eh, I don't like glow. Okay, so then we're going to click on the little masking icon again for the uh, mask. And then I'm going to click on lumen again to get another luminosity. So you can see that it removed it again from the midtones and the darker tones, but it's mainly on the highlights little bit over the top. So I'm going to take opacity and I'm going to pull this down. Just a little bit. I just want this more subtle than it's doing, but as I recall when I was here, it was uh, one of the most spectacular skies I've ever seen. And there was a lot of warm parts in the sky, a lot of cool parts in the sky. And <laughs> my camera just isn't uh, capturing it like I saw it with my own eyes. So I'm trying to recreate that um here now i think that looks pretty good so uh let's uh let's try a tone uh enhancer even though i did most of this of course already in the develop module let's just see uh, what goes here now i hit auto and 99.9 percent .9 of the time i don't like what auto does so i'll undo that but what i do is it's still kind of a little bright in that middle part so I'm going to pull highlights down. See, just bring it out, pull whites down a little bit. Maybe just open up those shadows just a little bit. Because I'm going to be putting a vignette on, so I don't want it too dark around the edges. So that, I think, looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to add filter, and I'm going to go to my old standby dynamic contrast. And you can see that that did quite a bit to the image right there. I'm going to just go to opac. I'm going to leave it on the default right when we open it. I'm going to pull opacity down, though like somewhere around 50, 48% before there's after. Yep, probably a little bit too much still. Notice I didn't do sharpening and noise reduction. I don't think it needs to be sharpened. Uh, tell you the truth, many times I think sharpening's overrated. I like sharpening for portraits. I like eyes really sharp. I like sharpening for animal shots, be it wildlife or pets even. I like sharp feathers and fur, sharp eyes, of course. Uh, but many times with landscape, images, um, a lot of folks tend to over sharpen them in my opinion. Um, so again, it's just an opinion. Photography isn't objective, it's subjective. So take my opinion for what it's worth. So personally, I don't want to over sharpen this. Uh, dynamic contrast though does add some nice detail to the image. It tell you the truth though, looking at it, it's still kind of over the top. It's a little more than what I would do typically, but I want to give you an idea of what these filters could do for your image and what um, masking, luminosity mask and things like that. So that's why I chose this. Now, I think I'm really done. I'm just going to add a, a vignette. So I'm going to go to vignette and I still get asked, why do you add a vignette? Well, if you add a vignette, let's go to Big Softy, just darkening the edges, it tends to push everyone's gaze more towards the middle. If you have very bright edges to your image, 
a uh, person's eyes will kind of gravitate toward that and sometimes just go off the image and it's not as pleasing to look at. So personally, I always like to add at the very least a very subtle vi vignette like this. So there's before, there's after. Just darkening those edges helps push everyone's gaze more towards the middle. Now in this case, the image really isn't um, level in, in, in tone. The right side is a little bit darker than the left, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this vignette off to the side. So I'm going to click right here, and you'll see the cursor turned into a plus sign. I'm going to hold the shift key in. When I hold the shift key in, I could drag the vignette around. Hopefully you could see that. And I'm going to offset it to the right and down a little bit maybe. So I'm offsetting it to the right, so the vignette is darkening the sky more towards the left-hand side of the image compared to the right side of the image. I'm going to leave it in the middle horizontally, or vertically, I should say. I'm sorry, in the middle vertically, uh, so that it's darkening equally on the top and bottom. So there's before and there's after. There's before, there's after. You can see it's a little more dark on this side compared to that side, so it kind of evens out the image a little bit. Now, of course, like right in here, this ice doesn't look right, and that's probably from when I went across with that brush. I didn't do a very good job when I was uh, brushing away the photo filter, so that would have to be taken care of. Also, overall, uh, the, the effects are probably a little strong. What you could do is go to the opacity slider, overall opacity, and just bring it down a little bit, make it look a little more realistic. Um, overall, I'm not very happy with what I did, but again, I didn't practice ahead of time. I just did it cold to give you an idea what you can do with these filters. I hope this does help you, though, process your image the way you want it processed, the way you want to do things. So that's it. That's how easy it is to create and process a panorama using On One Photo Raw 2019. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.